Good morning and welcome to this Holy Communion service and it's on the Sunday, first Sunday after Trinity but being recorded on the Friday before that. So, welcome. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our many failures to keep this way of truth and life. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences for the sake of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the Collect for this first Sunday after Trinity. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the Old Testament Book of Ruth, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Marlon and Kilian. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of one was Orpah and the name of the other, Ruth. 
They lived there about 10 years, and both Marlon and Killian died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law to return to the country of Moab, for she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she was with her two daughters-in-law, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too whole, old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait till they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter to me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her, and she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. May the Lord do to me, and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. And when they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women said, Is this Naomi? She said to them, Do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went away full, and the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, with her, who returned from the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. This is the word of the Lord. This morning's Gospel comes from Matthew, beginning at chapter 9, verse 35. So, hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, 
but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. He called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions, Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This Sunday begins a short series taken from the book of Ruth. And so this morning, my short sermon will be based on the reading from Ruth, not the Gospel. It is a bit like an old folk tale, the book of Ruth. But in fact, most scholars seem to think that it is actually a bit of history, not merely an engaging fiction. And it would be very odd, actually, if part of the genealogy of Jesus himself, back to Ruth and beyond that, were fictitious. But now, this morning, a question for us. Is the book of Ruth about Ruth, or is it about God? No, it's not intended as a trick question, because we know that the Bible tells the story about how God deals with people throughout history, and we learn about God in and through God's dealings with human beings. Now, Naomi, of course, was Jewish. She and Elimelech, her husband, had left home because of a famine. He had died, followed by his two sons, leaving Ruth and Orpah as the two daughters-in-law with Nen, all three widows. Ruth expresses profound commitment to Naomi and her God. She will go back with her to her people and to her God. There is a little clue in the text to the person after God who is central in the story, at least to begin with, in this chapter. Hardly ever in scripture is a man referred to as the woman's husband. It is almost always the woman who is referred to as the man's wife. But in plain view, in verse 3 of chapter 1, we are told, and I quote, Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband died. Very strange form. Some scholars have even wondered if the book might have been written by a woman, but whether or not God was making clear that Ruth, a Moabitess, was drawn into the Jewish fold by a woman who had suffered so much that she thought her own name should not be gentle, pleasant, the meaning of Naomi, but it should be Mara, the embittered one, because as she says in verse 20, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. How honest is that? There's a faithful woman for you. The Lord's hand has gone out against me, she says. The Almighty has made my life very bitter. The Lord has brought me back empty. The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. So it's not yet Ruth whose faith we are considering. It's that of Naomi. Perhaps the immediate question for us this morning then is this 
taken away as we all have been to another land during the battle with COVID-19 suffering bereavement as many have suffering in other ways more than one do our lives yet speak to others as deeply and as winningly as Naomi's life spoke to Ruth? That's the question. Amen. And now I use a form of the creed to express for us all our faith in the triune God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lies in our hearts, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And before we pray, we have a few moments to reflect as we listen to some music. G.
Let us pray for the world and for the church and for ourselves within it. We pray, O oh Lord, for the world caught in the COVID-19 pandemic. Whatever its origins, we know that as we pray for the world today, we really do include every part of the world, every country and every person. We give thanks for all the efforts of governments and scientists, civil servants, health authorities, local authorities. There are so many who have kept working under near impossible burdens and circumstances. We marvel at the self-sacrifice and sheer hard work and commitment of all, and we pray for them as the battle continues. We pray for those who must decide in every nation how to proceed, what restrictions to alter or to ease or tighten and when. Grant wisdom, insight and thoughtfulness to those under pressure to do something on behalf of the rest of us. Lead our leaders in the ways of justice, peace and obedience to your laws, now and always. Amen. These are difficult times for your church worldwide, O Lord. We pray for the bishops, our Bristol Diocese bishops, Viv and Lee, for the new Archbishop of York, Stephen Cottrell, and for all who carry leadership responsibility here and across the worldwide church and churches. Grant relief and recovery to those who must take funerals with but a handful of mourners present. Encourage them and reassure them of your loving care for them as well as for those who grieve. We pray for all who long to sit on a chair or pew in their church, who long to pray together with others, who long to stand to sing your praise, who long to join fully in the mystery of the Holy Communion. We ask you, Lord, to reassure them, us, that you are with us always, even unto the end of the age. Amen. And we pray for all those who have been ill in recent days, remembering especially Oliver, the vicar of this Abbey Church. May he be restored to full health and strength and be able to leave hospital soon for the days of recuperation to follow. We also pray for Lizzie and for their whole family. We bring to the Lord all who have been struggling in recent days, those directly affected by the virus, those with other ailments, those with other worries. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto you. Lastly, we take just a few moments of quiet to bring our own prayers to God in the silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. Let us therefore pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. By your Holy Spirit, you make us your friends. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. Taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke the bread, shared it with them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks, shared it, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, as we remember all that Jesus did, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth and your kingdom comes. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to be with you forever at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. And so now on behalf of us all, I draw near with faith. I receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for us, and his blood, which he shed for us. I eat and drink in remembrance that he died for us, and we feed together on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we close with this great blessing which is attributed to St. Alden, who was the abbot here in the abbey in the 7th and 8th centuries. Therefore let us all, snatched from danger, give thanks with gratitude to Christ who reigns forever. Glory be to the unbegotten God and to the begotten Son, together with the Holy Spirit, ruling all ages beyond. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.